you cannot send an already mastered reference track again through your own mastering chain. This is the most safe way to go in Effort Studio. Hi. Sending a master track through the same master chain you created for an unmastered track is nonsense. Referencing your own music to another track can only work if you hear the reference material unaltered. The same is mostly true for previewing sounds in the browser. Not only that the samples are mostly normalized to 0 dB, which will most likely result in distortion if sent at full volume to a master chain, you want to hear mostly and mainly the unaltered sample. There are two ways you can achieve this in FL Studio's mixer. First, do the right settings. By default, the preview mixer track in the audio settings is set to nowhere, means to the master. This is not what I want. To have control over the signal, I need it on my own track. For example, track 1. I name the track properly, give it a color and dock it to the left side of the mixer to have it always visible even when scrolling the others. I never want to have this channel muted, which would happen when for example soloing other tracks. Shift click the LED to lock the active state. When soloing other tracks now, it stays unmuted. For the reference track, I right click the topmost track of my playlist and make it an audio track for mixer track 2. Every audio file I drop onto this track will now automatically be routed to this mixer track. I lock its active state here too. Do the same in the playlist and dock it to the left side. The first way to exclude these channels from the master would be to kill their routing and choose the output of your sound card directly on the channels themselves. Please experiment with this method. But I got trouble that for example some samples in the browser didn't preview correctly after the new audio engine was released 3 or 4 updates before. ImageLine told me that one should stay away with direct out routings. This can lead to unexpected behavior. Another point I was hunting for an alternative way was that I want to measure my own song compared to the reference track in a single analyzer to show their data overlapping. This is not easy to achieve on separate tracks without spending money for specialized plugins. Instead of sending them direct out, I searched for a way to do everything on the master itself. We know sidechaining the tracks, instead of sending them, exclude their signals from the main input of the receiving track, as their volume is basically turned to zero. We know too, that nevertheless, their signal is present at full volume at separate inputs. I insert now a patcher in the last slot of the master and name it properly. To be able to hear our main signal, I make first the main connection. To be able to work with the preview and reference tracks, I activate their separate inputs in this patcher. To keep track what's going on and have easier access to the different cables, I put in a plugin for the preview input and name it. I chose an EQ, as sometimes I like to preview my samples with a low cut when previewing in context. But you can choose whatever one you like, or even none. This already works fine. No matter how I set the limiter on the master, the preview signal doesn't get affected. Now it comes to the reference track. Please don't get confused. This is a more difficult topic, as we need several actions being involved. If we do the routing as we did with the preview track, we have the problem that both tracks play at the same time.
we need a switch which turns off one part if the other plays and I want to control it. I insert a Fruity Mute 2 on the main chain and one in the chain of the reference signal. As this mute function is automatable. I put in a button in the surface and name it AB. In the mapping tab, I connect this button to mute inputs of both plugins. This doesn't help us very much, as they both do now the same. We want to mute one while the second unmutes and other way around. I need to reverse the behavior of the first plugin, as it shall let the signal through when having the button not pressed. An easy to use tool is the XYZ controller. I activate in and output for parameter X and connect the button of our surface to the input and the output of the controller to our plugin. In the controller GUI, I use the output mapping to reverse the signal. Et voilà. They now move in opposite directions. Leaving the button unpressed led through the main signal. Pressing the button mutes the main signal and unmutes the reference track. Perfect. I said before, I like to measure the frequency spectrum of both signals in a single plugin overlapping each other. Let's set this up. One of my all time favorites, which everybody should have installed, is Voxengo Span. It's free and fantastic. You find the link in the description. Span offers multiple inputs, and we need a second one. Connect the main input and the reference track to the inputs of SPAN. I just use it for analyzing, so I don't route it out. Open the plugin's GUI and go into its options. Under the Processing tab, hit AutoMap Inputs. In the plugin itself, choose E for input 3 and F for input 4. Open the pop-up box for underlay and set it to orange. The green curve represents our main signal, while the orange curve shows the frequency response of the reference track. Now we've got all the time both signals visible in the analyzer and we can freely choose which one to hear. Job done. Without bringing the audio engine into any trouble, we were able to route the preview track and the reference track to ignore the master FX and build in some nice features to work fast and efficient with our reference material. Enjoy previewing and referencing with MasterTrack 2.0. Thank you for watching.